Now, I wasn't even sure whether or not I was going to bother watching Beast in the East. I kind of thought that this might be just kind of a filler type of show and didn't really know if it was going to be worth my time or not. But over the weekend, I decided, yeah, what the hell? I got about an hour and a half, three or so. That's probably enough time for this. So let's go ahead and watch it. Let's see what they did. I mean, the, the company had been hyping this up for a few weeks, and it wasn't like it was going to be a full pay-per-view show where I had a lot of big stuff tied into it. Frankly, it was about a Brock Lesnar appearance and Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens for the NXT title. I mean, that's what this show was really built around. So I'm like, eh, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and watch it and see what they did. Now, I don't know if I was the only one that thought it was either ironic or just hilarious that the WWE would have a big show like this on the 4th of July, you know, America's Independence Day in Japan. Was I, was I the only one that took note of that or found a great deal of humor in that? It was kind of like Hiroshima, Nagasaki, up your ass. We beat you in World War II. Now we're going to have a show in your sumo dome on our Independence Day. What the fuck knows? It just shows you how much of a loser I could be at times in the stupid shit I think about. Now, in terms of this show overall, maybe I thought it was going to be a little bit more than what it was. I, mean, I thought it was okay for what it was. I mean, it really, frankly, was, like I said, it was about a Brock Lesnar appearance. And, you know, Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens for the NXT title. Now, to kick off the show, we got the surprise. I guess it was a surprise. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I didn't give a fuck. You know, we got a Jericho appearance. And obviously, he has history going back to Japan. So it's Chris Jericho versus Neville. And it, it was good for what it was. You know, I kind of like the fact that this match seemed to be a little more suited to a Japanese-style audience. It felt not like a match we necessarily just see in America all the time. It felt, to me at least, to me at least, it felt like a match that was being customized to the audience, which is, to me, how it should be, and I understand it. And I thought it was good for what it was. You know, it, it, as far as Jericho going over Neville, I could kind of feel either way about it because on the one hand, I think, frankly, sometimes Jericho loses too much and makes anything that he's ultimately involved with too predictable. Um, so sometimes it's okay for him to go over. And with this being kind of a filler throw-in show, you know, where you're not going to have Jericho on TV a ton, you're not going to be reminding people a ton on TV that he beat Neville. It's like, eh, it's not the worst thing in the world to have happen. Yet at the same point in time, while Jericho was over huge there in Japan, it's like, you know, Neville's the guy that's there all the time. You know, in the show really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's not like you're building a whole lot off of it. Why not just have Neville go over here? I mean, honestly, why not just have him go over? I, I thought maybe that could have been the way they should have gone here too. You know, it just it was a it was a weird booking decision. And I'm sure a lot of people aren't going to harp on it because it's Jericho and because it's Jericho going over. We won't sit there and say, ooh, the veteran went over the young guy and it's stupid. You know, but at the same point in time, again, like I said, with Jericho, it's a much different situation because he usually comes back just to put people over, which I think sometimes, frankly, is a mistake and not the best utilization for him all the time. We had a thrown together, at least in my mind, even though there's reason for it, uh, triple threat Divas title match. And, and frankly, at this point in time, I'm not a fan of anything they're doing with the Divas division. And in particular, I know that until Nikki Bella passes AJ Lee for the most days as Divas champion, that it's going to be Nikki Bella as a champion. Any match that she enters into, she's going to walk out the champion. The stories heading into the matches aren't good. Uh, the stories in the matches aren't that particularly good. The finishes aren't that particularly good. Like this time, she doesn't have any help, but she's still able to win. It's like, so why does she? How the hell does she need the help? You know, just you know, like I said, I'm just biding my time with the Divas Division until somebody else takes that title off of Nikki Bella after she passes AJ Lee. And the shameful thing is, is that Nikki Bella has improved tremendously. You know, I think a lot of people have gotten selective memory about the fact of how much they used to knock on the Bella slides. Remember when you used to call them that? Uh, remember when he used to shit on them and said they didn't bring anything to the table, they weren't talented, they weren't any good? Well, you can look at Nikki now. Maybe some of you will sit there and say, she magically grew boobs and she got good. Well, obviously she worked hard, got a lot better at her craft, and took it seriously. I mean, she's a legitimate women's wrestler. 
And in a lot of ways, she's a, she's a good representation of the Divas division as the champion. You know, but I just don't give a fuck. Now, in terms of Brock Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston, I hope Kofi got a good payday for going out there to Japan just to sit there and have Lesnar freaking go, fee fi fo fum suplex suplex this ain't dumb. <laughs> Hopefully he got a nice payday to get stiff for a couple of minutes. You know, it's about the kind of special attraction. You know, Lesnar has a little bit of history in Japan, especially his post-first WWE run. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about it, actually, is when the New Day ran out afterwards, and Lesnar plows through Xavier Woods, but also Big E as well. You know, this is my whole thing, is you should be building up guys like Big E to potentially be future opponents for a Brock Lesnar. Having him just completely smash through him like he's nothing, you know, I don't think helps Brock Lesnar a lot as a monster babyface. It's not particularly necessary, and it most certainly doesn't help Big E as his big fucking future monster babyface not heal. You know, it, it just, I thought it was personally kind of unnecessary. It was kind of unnecessary of all the people that they went with Kofi, but maybe they trusted Kofi to make it look good or to do the right thing. I don't really know. But like I said, all, I mean, frankly, ultimately, other than the Lesnar appearance, yeah, like I said, you got the surprise of Jericho taking on Neville, and I'm sure a lot of you enjoyed that. This show was about Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens for the NXT title, and I think over the past couple of weeks, if you've been watching NXT, you could kind of tell where the company was going. You could get an idea of what direction this was heading in, especially based off of the success of Owens on the main roster. You knew this was kind of a coronation moment for Finn Balor as that franchise player for NXT for the time going forward, maybe perhaps through the rest of 2015. Uh, in terms of this match, it worked for me. It clicked for me, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. It's by far the best Finn Balor match, I think, personally, that I've seen during his time in WWE. It was the first time I actually saw something. Now, I didn't see a main event type of talent, but at least I saw something beyond just the body paint and the entrance. And that's progress, and I will take it. And I will applaud WWE and that NXT brand because at least they've got a guy. And you could tell they're big on Finn Balor. And for those of you that have always been frustrated about, oh, they'll be big on Sheamus because he's bigger. He'll be big on John Cena because he's bigger. They'll be big on this guy like Roman Reigns because he's bigger. Ryback because he's big. You know, they clearly got a hard on for Finn Balor, and he weighs about the same that I do. He's not a big guy. You know, so you could at least see an evolution in some of the thought process of WWE in the way that they approach some of these new faces and these fresher talents to their company. So that's a bit refreshing, and I applaud the fact that they seem to have it for this guy. They believe in this guy, and by God, by hook or by crook, they are going to try and get you to believe in that guy all the while, also understanding the audience that they are playing to on the WWE Network with these type of shows and knowing that a Finn Balor is going to be a big hit amongst at least that segment of the audience. Now, me personally... It's kind of a situation of you had to move Owens away from that NXT title. He was going to have to drop it to somebody at some point in time. He belongs on the main roster, and that's where he should be. I personally didn't think that anybody was ready to take that strap for him, from him, but based off of the circumstance and situation, I guess Finn Balor would have worked. I could have maybe went with the Samoa Joe doing it at some point in time too, perhaps. Um, but, you know, I... I I'm not there with Finn Balor yet. I'm sorry. I'm just not there. He showed me something more than I frankly have seen out of him since he got to NXT. But you know, he needs work before he's WWE main roster ready. And that's the truth, whether you guys want to hear it or not. A lot of you believe he's a very talented performer. And maybe he is. Maybe the WWE just hasn't do it, done a good job of putting him in that type of position to where he can showcase all of his skills. It felt like he had more opportunity here to showcase some of the things that he did, and I thought he did a good job here. And I did like, in this particular case, because they were in Japan and it was a title match, I like how they tied it in to the heritage of Japanese wrestling, talking about the flower presentation for a championship match, and the streamers for a championship match. Not every fucking match! ROH. So at least that worked for me, because it, it made it stand out it made it feel different, and actually the visuals of it looked really, really good too. You know, this was basically a filler kind of 
WWE one night only type of equivalent in some ways with a match that had story and purpose as the main event. That's basically what this was. Had a random Jericho Neville match. Yeah, you had a Divas title match that had some story to it, but you know who really gives a fuck at this point? Honestly, Brock Lesnar's thing was just random. He was there as an attraction, and that's fine. Uh, but Balor and Owens delivered. It was it was worth the time to watch it. It's not any uh, memorable show that's going to live in the annals of WWE Network special event greatness or anything.